Hello and welcome. Today we are in the Tier 10 Royal Navy Heavy Cruiser, the Goliath. She's still a work in progress and thus subject to change. She was given to me by Wargaming for review purposes, so that I could show you guys what she is like at least while testing. So, if I were to explain the ship, she is somewhat similar to the Henri. If you've seen other videos of the Drake, which is the Tier 9, uh, British heavy cruiser that's being tested. She is very, very similar to that. In many, many aspects, they're very, very similar. But if you don't know those, uh, she is somewhat like the Henri. That is, she is going to most likely, mostly be used as a long-range HE spammer. Her AP penetration just isn't quite enough. So the distinctive features of the ship is she has a high HP pool. As you can see, 62,000. This is with survivability expert, though. She has three super heals, so like Minotaur. She has a Minotaur-sized um, uh, citadel, meaning that you're going to take a lot of AP penetration damage, but the super heal kind of counteracts that. She has good ballistics, and she has 234mm caliber guns, meaning that uh, they do overmatch quite a few armor plates. I mean, I believe Minotaur actually does get the overmatch, right? I mean, let me check. Yep, Minotaur should get overmatched by these, meaning that... Um, if a ship is, if a Minotaur is bow on, you can just go through that armor scheme. And the same will happen to the Smolensk in that case. So essentially she can punish quite a few light cruisers and uh, for everything else she has HE. Now she does have a long reload that um, I think it's 19 seconds or 19.5, something like that. By the way, I show her in port later, but keep one thing in mind. For some reason, recently when Wargaming has been doing the testing of the ships, the stats we can actually see in port don't always line up with what the ship is in game. For example, the Drake has a 9.6 km concealment range in port, but when you go in game, it's 10.4. She doesn't have. So, the Goliath doesn't have the greatest concealment at 11 km. She also doesn't bring, like, a radar along or anything, so that's kind of a shame. She does have some anti air. But the main thing is that she can take quite a bit of punishment. She can't dish out a lot of punishment with AP against, say, Battleship, so... In that sense, she isn't quite like an Onri. Like, if you get the broadside of a Yamato and the Onri at, I don't know... 6-7 kilometers, the Onri is absolutely going to crush the Yamato. Whereas I think the Goliath is gonna have quite a bit more trouble. However, she does have a fairly thick Citadel plate, even though the Citadel is Minotaur-sized. Uh, ships like, for example, a Seattle might not be able to penetrate it for Citadel heads. Meaning that she is actually rather excellent at close range against light cruisers. However, the main thing that I kinda like on the ship, that is, when I'm playing her, is that her 58mm HE penetration by default, without the FHE or anything, plus the high alpha damage, 3850 per shell, and 12 guns means that you you have a very high alpha strike on these shells and the ballistics are good enough that you can utilize this even at long range and the penetration is good enough that you can uh, penetrate through quite a few um, deck armor plates on uh, many battleships meaning that you can deal absolutely massive alpha strikes with HE and they obviously still have a high fire chance as well I believe it's 26% or something along those lines. Essentially, she does a lot of HE damage at long range against battleships. And this, I think, is also a downside of her. Not that when you're playing her it's a downside, it's the downside for the game. You see, I don't know how fun it will be to play against this, because um, this is very easy to use. The shells are pretty accurate. They're pretty fast as well. So you're not going to be dodging these shells very well, and while it might not be very apparent on this booster, it will be very apparent just how incredibly dangerous these are to a battleship. Now, admittedly, 13.6 km is fairly close to a battleship, especially with um, a citadel the size of this Goliath, but I mean, come on, you'll see some ridiculous damage. 10,000 damage with one salvo just like that, plus two fires. That's one-sixth of the Massachusetts HP. Just like that. And that's HE. You can't angle against this, right? So 
The only thing you can do is not get hit. Which you can only do in one of two ways. You either sink the Goliath, which is going to be difficult. You might deal a lot of damage to her, but it's going to be difficult for you alone to sink her. Also, the follow-up salvo was 7,000 damage. So, actually, this this particular fight against the Massachusetts, Massachusetts is why I picked this fight. Okay, this one only did 3,800, but my aim was kind of poor. Because you'll see some crazy damage to this Massachusetts, and the Drake in that sense is actually very similar. And even if I take damage, which I'm gonna take eventually, you'll see just how long you can still survive even though you're being focus fired by a lot of people. 8,200 damage on other two fires? I mean, only three of those shells managed to not penetrate. This is kinda, I think, the danger of the ship. I'm sure you can play against it, and I, I'm i sure even a ship, ships like the Henri are probably actually still better than her at the HE spam aspect. But I think the Henri is somewhat harder to use. Okay, I took heavy damage there. I took like 16k damage, but um, I'm still fine. I still have 43,000 HP left. Now the eight, now the secondaries are going to deal a lot of damage, but it should still be okay. I'm gonna try a shot on the Moscow instead of the Massachusetts, because she was behind the broadside, so perhaps I'll hit more shells. Unfortunately, I only hit three of them. But yeah, the main issue I have with the ship is that she might be a bit too easy to use for this kind of HE spam. She is very, very effective. Otherwise, though. As a ship itself, though, she's pretty good. Now, I wouldn't call her incredibly overpowered. Because remember, we're still talking about the basically 20 second reload, but... Um, she does seem to deal a lot of damage. So, and unlike, you know, Italian SAP, you can't angle against this. Here, you'll see me actually rush, rushing in. I mean, we're talking about the Worcester close range, Natago, and Izumo, uh, Moskva, and Venezia. All of these ships will be here. Okay, 17k damage. I already healed though. I'm gonna get close to the Worcester and I'm gonna dump torps. And uh, I mean, she only has 30k HP and I have four torpedoes, so I should be able to sink her, right? Wrong, because they all hit the bow, and uh, unfortunately, this meant that uh, they didn't actually. Um, well, the armor the armor was somewhat saturated. Also, I missed one of the torpedoes, which didn't help. So I I did go down, but I think this kind of shows well that even with you know against combined firepower you can survive for quite a bit of time. If you did the same thing with say I don't know, Minotaur, you probably would have done you know been dead by the point by the time you went around the little island there. You probably would never have been able to launch those torpedoes on the Worcester. I mean, we eventually win this game, but I just wanted to show this because it shows very well just how incredibly dangerous this HE spam is. And it also shows rather well how um, how long she can survive. I mean, this wasn't the greatest game, but we still did deal a lot of damage. And almost all of it came from just spamming HE at range. Now, admittedly, admittedly she is still a work in progress and could change, but I'm really not sure what they could change. I think she'll be fine if you only get like one or two of these per match, but I think if she gets too common, people are gonna feel kind of like fighting a Smolensk, that it's gonna be just annoying, and the uh, end result is going to be that um, people are gonna complain. But I mean, lo look at that. I took 82k damage. I My alpha actually only did like 82k damage as well. So there's a lot of room for improvement, if you play better that is, but... Still, the HE seems kind of crazy strong. But I suppose, considering how little luck I had against the Moscow, for example, perhaps it, maybe I just got lucky these few times I've played her. Who knows? So overall, I would say that the ship is strong, but with some caveats. And that I think the Drake might be a better ship, tier by tier, because she is very close to the power of the Goliath. And that's kind of worrying. And then the other sense, um, well, she isn't exactly the Henri still. She doesn't have a reload booster. She doesn't have the speed, you know, stuff like that. 
But I mean, we'll get to see when the regular players get their hands on her. Maybe she's actually even better than I thought. Because Venezia apparently turned out to be a very strong ship. Although, I did love the Venezia right from the get-go though. Also, if you're wondering why I might sound so weird, that's because today Asthma has not been the kindest to me, so I apologize for that. So, let's take a look at the Goliath in port. And I remember last time that I made this video, I noticed that in the comments absolutely everyone loved the look of the ship. Every single person, with no exceptions, praised the beauty of this ship. I mean... If that's your thing, I'm not gonna judge you too harshly, but uh, you might want to think twice on that one, okay? Anyway, let's take a look at the stats, but a little disclaimer, I don't know how accurate these stats are because, unfortunately, some of the stats aren't really represented well in the port. For example, in the port, my Drake says she has a 9.6 kilometer concealment, when I go into battle it's 10.4. And this means that I don't know which of these numbers are always accurate. We'll still take a look at them though, just in case. So, the main things that the ship brings is a super heal, uh, a lot of HP for a heavy cruiser, and 234mm caliber guns. These are the main things that the ship has. And uh, combined, they are pretty good actually. So 62,000 HP is significantly more than I think any other heavy cruiser other than the super cruisers. And I mean, it is actually on the super cruiser level. So this is a nice HP pool. And remember, heals scale with the amount of HP you have. So the more HP you have, the more you heal, which is a very nice combination. Note though that this is with survivability expert. Why survivability expert? Well, I mean, come on. If you had the choice between basics of survivability or an expert in survivability would you really go for the basics i mean come on guys she also has a torpedo belt which is surprising for a cruiser anyway so main thing she has 12 guns 234 millimeter so in this sense she kind of does play a little bit like the audrey with her ability to overmatch things and she also has 3850 he damage, which uh, I'm sure you noticed the effectiveness of. Unfortunately, her reload is 19.5 seconds. Actually, I don't know if it's 19.5. Maybe it's 19. It's hard to tell because, uh, hey, you know, like I mentioned, uh, the stats in port don't necessarily mean that that's what we actually get in-game as well, but it'll be something around that. The AP, unfortunately, is somewhat lacking. The penetration value on it is just not that great, let's to put it that way. The HE, though, is actually really, really amazing. I mean, it has 58mm penetration, so it's divided by 4, just like the Germans, which means that basically the only ship you cannot penetrate with your HE, at least the middle deck part, is the Kremlin, and I guess some parts of the Friedrich der Grosse. Not the Grosse Kofast, Friedrich der Grosse. Also, um, this, is not this is not with IFHE. Torpedoes, they should be the same as the Minotaur, except you have one set on each side rather than two. And higher defense, uh, we can take a look at the numbers, but these are meaningless because Antair does absolutely nothing at all. It cannot shoot down a single plane unless you're playing the CV. Uh, in that case, Antair is absolutely brutal and needs to be nerfed, but since this is a cruiser, Antair doesn't do anything. Maneuverability, 34.6 knots, 800 meter turning circle, 10 second rudder shift. This is... All three of these are worse than on the Drake, which is the tier 9 uh, British heavy cruiser. The Drake is 35 knots, I think like a 760 turning circle, something like that, and like 8 or 9 second rudder shift, something along those lines. Which uh, doesn't bode well for the tier 10. She also has an 11 kilometer concealment, at least in port. I don't know if that's the case in game, because like I mentioned with the Drake, Drake says it's 9.6 kilometer concealment in game, whereas it's, or in port, but in game it's actually 10.4. Which is really confusing at times. So I don't know what to believe. So consumables, it's a standard uh, cruiser damage control party. It's a super heal. You only get one charge, so you get one extra from the premium repair party and one extra from superintendent for a grand total of three 
repair parties that have an 80 second reload and then you get access to Hydra. I believe this Hydra was buffed because initially I don't remember it being 5 km. But I mean, I might just be wrong as well. If you're playing a ship like this, almost always pick Hydro. Defensive Entire doesn't do anything because look, this plus 50% is the main thing that you'll get. Because the 300% is only if they run into flak bubbles and CVs don't run into flak bubbles. I mean, they sometimes do, but in that case they take massive damage anyway, so it doesn't matter if it's 300% more or not. You'll kill them anyway. Which is why this is just not a very good skill in my opinion at this point. Upgrades wise, I recommend really heavily going for gun, gun range because uh, with this, 19.5 is very nice, but without it, I think you'll find it lacking quite a few times, or quite often, because... Well, you can't be rushing close in to try to delete the enemy, because they will actually delete you first. Concealment, obviously, then rudder shift. You, despite that, it's still a 10 second rudder shift, which is kind of slow. Obviously, aiming systems, I mean, you could go anti-air, this will give you extra flak bubbles, so if you're one of those crazy people who go for defensive anti-air, this probably synergizes decently. And then I go for the uh, special Hydra upgrade. If I didn't have this, I would go for damage control. And in the first slot, obviously, we want our main guns not to break as often, so main arms modification. So, the main thing is that I, uh, I actually really enjoy the ship. I just don't know how good of a ship it'll be for our game. Because the guns are fairly accurate. The shells will roughly go where you're aiming. And HE does not require the most amount of skill to use, so I'm not sure how fun it will be to play against this stuff as a battleship. But actually playing the Goliath myself, yeah, it's great. Although, notice the 19.5 second reload here. I wonder if just playing the Drake isn't better though, because she has like a 16 or 17 second reload. So you might think, oh, the Goliath has uh, 12 guns versus the Drake's 9 guns. And that means there's going to be a huge difference in DPM, but actually the difference is not nearly as pronounced because... well... there's a reload difference. Just like there is with the Puerto Rico versus the uh, Alaska. Uh, the Tier 9 one actually is a lot better than people think compared to the Tier 10 anyway. So yeah, I don't, I don't know. It kind of reminds me of the situation with the Minotaur and Neptune when they were initially being tested back when they still had HE. Uh, the Neptune and the Minotaur just ended up being very similar in terms of their strengths. And uh, eventually that got rectified, obviously. As we all know, the Neptune is not exactly a great ship, whereas the Minotaur can be quite fun. And uh, I wonder if we're going to get a similar situation with the Drake and the Goliath, because remember, these are still works in progress. So... I guess we'll find out in the future, but right now, though, I prefer the Drake over the Goliath. Also, we do need to take a look at the elephant in the room, which is actually, no, that, that's not actually a good way of phrasing it, is it? This ship has a massive citadel. Look, this is the citadel, right? Look at this. Look at how huge it is. It is, it is very large, okay? It sits quite high in the water. I mean, the ship itself already sits quite high in the water, but the Citadel in particular sits very high in the water. I mean, it's a nice 203mm, you know, uh, torpedo belt, plus the 38 or 25 on the sides, but we're still talking about a large Citadel, a very, very large Citadel. Then again, the rest of the ship is really large too, so you're going to take a lot of damage, but this is what the Super Heal is for. And uh, you can't really say that it's the elephant in the room because uh, elephants are quite small compared to the size of the citadel. Even whales are probably quite small. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I would like to thank the patrons on Patreon. Thank you very much for your continued support. Nashira. And I hope I'll see you guys next time.